This is a retro review of the Totem Mites. Let's see what they have to offer. On the front of the Totem Mite we have two drivers, a woofer and a tweeter. Now the big circle around the tweeter is some kind of felt-like material, probably to minimize some cabinet reflections. The build quality is very nice and when you pick them up you do get a sense of having a quality project in your hands instead of some cheap lightweight cabinet. On the rear we have two sets of speaker binding posts, so you can use them with a single loudspeaker cable, you can buy wire them or you can buy amp them. With a single wire you do need to connect the two posts per side, so both drivers receive the music signal and when I bought these second hand they came without the original connectors, but any piece of wire will work. If possible, use the same wire as your loudspeaker cable and because this is a bass reflex design, it also has a port. Now let's talk about specs. The Totem Might is a two-way ported design. It has a soft dome tweeter and a nominal impedance of 8 ohms and a sensitivity of 87 dB. The recommended power from your amplifier is stated at 20 to 80 watts. Now the Rega Mira 3 that I mostly used for this review, because they played so well together, is rated at 61 watts into 8 ohms, so that should be enough. Although I did find I had to turn up the volume quite a bit to really make the totem sing. And the dimensions of this thing this thing is just tiny. So what is my experience with the Totem Might loudspeaker? Well, I really like them. Are they perfect? No, of course not. There's no such thing as the perfect loudspeaker. And with an internal volume of just 6.5 liters, you can't expect them to give you full, powerful, low bass. And indeed, they don't do low bass. But man, the bass that you do get is mind-blowing. Especially when you see how tiny this cabinet is. If you play The Vanishing of Peter Strong from Yellow, check that number out on my playlist on Tidal. If you play that number, the dynamics and the power of the bass will completely make you rethink what kind of bass small cabinets are capable of. Now size is relative of course, but I think I can fit some 15 of these loudspeakers in a single Ocelia. And for those of you that are new to the channel, the Ocelia Calliope is my main loudspeaker. The top end of the sound is also very impressive, although I would like a little bit more sparkle in the highs. It's all just a bit too dark sounding for me. It feels like the highs are rolled off a bit, more than I would prefer. However, having said that, during this review something interesting happened. As I am making this video, I just saw the mites yesterday and of course, when you sell something, you want to demonstrate them at its best performance to the potential buyer. So I set up the mites in my living room, because that is the best acoustical environment in my house. But this room is much too big for these small little loudspeakers. Now they will fill up a room of this size with music, of course. But if you want to test for stereo image and things like that, you have to sit closer. So I placed a chair in front of the loudspeakers and installed the mites on my wonderful Partington Super Dreadnought loudspeaker stands. These are some classics and most of the time they are a good match with any bookshelf loudspeaker I put on them. However, for this chair I was using, these stands were much too low. The tweeter was way below ear level, so I picked up my Northstone speaker stands and immediately the sound became less dark and more lively in a good way. Now I thought that the improvement came from having the tweeter at ear level and a big part of the improvement probably was related to that. But the problem I have with the Northstone stand is that if you tap them, they have quite a ring to them, like a bell. Unlike the dreadnoughts which pretty much sound completely dead when you tap them. So I picked some damping feet to place between the stand and the loudspeaker and some of that liveliness was gone immediately. I took them off again and the liveliness returned. Now this made me think, Totem has always offered tweaks like their beaks, a tweak that is based on resonance control. Now I have never heard these beaks, but apparently, according to this experiment, they are onto something. So if you have these loudspeakers, or whenever you get them, placement and resonance control is definitely something to experiment with. They also benefit from a good amplifier match. The Totem Rega combination was wonderfully musical, but if you check out Vlog 98, you will hear that they also play wonderful with my Quad 34 306 combination.
and they showed even more authority with the Noicom setup. I placed a sound clip of the totems and the Noicom on my channel too. So make sure to check out those two videos if you want to hear these totems perform. Also make sure to play around with placement. Far away from the wall will give you a better and bigger sound stage and closer to the wall will give you much better bass. So try to find the spot that works best in your room for bass and sound stage. So if these loudspeakers are so good, why did I sell them? Well. I sold them because they are too small for this room and I already have too many loudspeakers in my small listening room. Also, this will generate some budget to go and look for other items to play with and share with you guys. So it was time to get them to a new owner. The guy that bought them was a guitar player by profession and he was blown away by the sound of these little loudspeakers. So if you ask me, these little loudspeakers are definitely worth a try. They don't really have any flaws and any critique that you might have is probably due to their smaller size, but from all the loudspeakers I have heard at this size, these are some of the best. And for the three to four hundred dollars asking price on the second hand market today, these are a no brainer if you ask me. So yes, I was set to let them go, but when you have 18 pairs of loudspeakers, sometimes you need to move on. And with that, we come to the end of this retro review. If you like the review, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I say thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.